Yeah, Perfect Blends Barbershop. We're on the south side of Atlanta. That's my brother right here. Twan cutting me for about a couple of years now. It all started when I was about eight years old. But I'll bring it back even further than that. When I was a young child, like four or five years old, my mother had me into modeling. So we would travel back and forth from Washington, D.C., which is where I'm originally from. We would travel back and forth from there to New York, agency out there. Eventually, somebody from Wilhelmina discovered me. And then uh, as I got older, my dad was a rapper, or is a rapper from the Bronx, New York. And so my dad, I call him my dad as my father. Only reason why I'm going to differentiate and, and, and let you guys know that this is my stepdad is so people won't be confused when I'm talking about that father and my other father, which is my biological father. So my dad has been in my life since I was about four or five years old. And so that's my dad. You know what I'm saying? When I was about eight, he taught me how to rap. He started writing raps for me. And so that's how I began to learn. And uh, him and my mother, when they discovered the talent, we went full force with it, and we started going hard. A couple of years later, I moved to Atlanta when I was like 12 years old. Uh, one of the main reasons we migrated from D.C. to Atlanta was because my mother, you know, we was chasing, we was basically chasing the dream, you know, for me and my career as an artist. Sweet, sweet girl, I got that spice for you. The sweeter than some fruit, I keep it right for you. On the first flight to you, I ain't trying to fight with you. Rather spend the night with you. Rather get inside of your soul. Rain on it like rainbows, I'ma follow you. When I found you, it was like I found a pile of the gold. With a ring on it, cause I know what I know. You know, but that thing on me, you the one that I chose. And I'ma tell them all about it. Tell the world. I won't hide you like my problems. I'ma treat you right, I promise. And I'ma lead you. My grandfather also was a big influence on my, in my music career. Definitely a musician in his day, he still is. He was also a revolutionary. He was a number of things, so all that stuff is bottled up inside of me. You know, my grandfather was, you know, in the movement and back in the day, took it very serious for the black struggle. He was a part of that movement. Here, along with my grandmother and my mother, they put me in a school that I went to as a child called Ujima Shule. And the principal of the school was Baba Zulu. And so this was basically like a pan-African school, a private school, but it was an African school. Like we had to wear dashikis every day to school. You couldn't come inside the school if the women didn't have a lap on, if the men didn't have dashikis on. Baba Zula didn't even let other races of people inside of the school. That's how serious it was. Trouble in the back streets, trouble in the alleyways, trouble in my rear view, trouble each and every way. Just to deal with all the trouble, had to roll the Mary J. Had to talk to Jaya, I lie every day. For niggas with the darker shade, the world ain't never safe. I keep on my darker shades. Trouble. My mother um, is my biggest supporter, you know, and I'm just blessed to have her. Um, through this, through this whole journey, I've been blessed to have a mother like her because. Uh, she, you know, supported me, believed in me when no one else, when no, when people didn't, when times was hard. She believed in me so hard that she refuses to listen to the radio or listen or watch the award shows because she said that she not watching no award shows until her son is on there. That that just lets you know the, the type of energy that she has when it comes to, you know, my career and stuff like that. Um. One of the main reasons why I'm able to keep going is because I had her support. You know what I'm saying? I tell people all, all the time, all the all the black man needed the support of a black woman. You know, that's the mother, and then the, the next is gonna be the wife. And God must have knew what everything I was gonna go through, and knew that I was gonna need a mother like that. It's just me, you, Mary, one Yeah, I'm a saint to your soul, but I never ain't going outside, baby. You got the keys to the road, and you really been. To be honest with you, at the beginning, it was fun. I was having fun rapping, being on stage and stuff like that, being in front of the camera. 
yeah, it was normal. And I was just doing what I felt like I was supposed to be doing. As I got older, as I grew up in it, you gotta think. So if I'm starting off at eight, nine years old, I moved to Atlanta at 12, I'm getting in the mix. You know, I'm, I, I signed my first record there at 16. So this has been a long journey that I've been doing it. I think somewhere down the line, it became like a roller coaster. It became stressful at times. It, it, I didn't know what to think at times. I had to grow up basically inside the industry, not in the industry, but as a kid that was known, my face was known and stuff like that. So I had to grow up into a man, but as that person as well. So, I, you know, of course things change when you become a man, the way you think about stuff, I became a lot more conscious. Uh, I started thinking about everything. My music started to change. I went through different phases and stuff. You know, it's been ups and downs in it. I've been through a few different record deals. It's been some high moments, it's been some great moments. Now I'm here, you know, and I haven't stopped. That's the one thing that I do pride myself on is the fact that I still didn't get, that I haven't given up because I had so many chances, so many opportunities to give up, throw in the towel, it wasn't working out. I'm putting out records, I'm, it's, I feel like it's, it's not getting its just due. I'm, I haven't made it to the point where I, I feel like I deserve yet, but it was all for a reason, because I wasn't ready. I wasn't even ready mentally, consciously, physically, spiritually. Now I'm thankful that God kept me so I can do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Now when I get the platform, now when I'm in front of the people, I'm using my gift in the way that it was originally meant for it to be used for. And not just for myself, but for the people, for the message, to raise the vibration, to raise the consciousness, to, to, for us to learn, for us to get through our emotions, you know, to give music. Uh, it's one of the most powerful things you can give to the world. Straight up, I see you first when you wake up. I see that face with no makeup. I might just buy you a Jacob. Straight up. Nobody between us, it ain't no eye when we team up. Yeah. Put a little ice on your fingers, flood out your wrist like a femur. No matter how I be seeming, I thought we had an agreement. You know these bitches be scheming, just be secure with your position before you feel like... That's what I thought. I mean, yeah, of course, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, this is about to be the next thing. Wayne Williams signed me up there at Jive Records. At the time, I was with a production label, Crown World ENT, Cersei and Money, one of my, my big brothers. And we had did a deal with Jive Records. I was 16 years old. They say I was the youngest rapper to sign the Jive Records. That's what they say. Um, or the youngest black rapper. So when we did the deal, some type of transition happened in the building. And Jive turned to RCA, it got complicated. The heads, the president of the label went somewhere else. And there was a new president. So they didn't quite understand me as an artist, so I got caught up in that transition and that mix. It ended up to where I, I left it, I left the label. And around that time is when my wife got pregnant. I was like, see, I was 16. And so all this stuff was happening. So I mean, I mean, it was all kind of emotions in the air. Somehow I was, I, I can't remember exactly how I felt, but I was just walking through it. Just like anything else, you wake up every day and you deal with what's in front of you for the day. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's a hundred things going on in your life, I mean, you got to get through the day each day, and day in and day out. It was a little bit of both. It was a little bit of both. It was a part of me that uh, felt like my career would be in jeopardy if I was to have a child at that age. And I think, yeah, that was a part of me that felt like that. I, I wasn't sure if I could handle it. Then it was another part of me that was like, ready for it. You know, it was another part of me that was ready for whatever was to come. And that it was another part of me that was like, you know, step up to the plate and do what you gotta do. And so I think that part of me is what won because I ended up having one of the biggest blessings, you know, in my life. Now I got four of them, but that was my first. And Isa, man, she is incredible. She's an incredible child. Like really God sent. Like it's things that the way this girl is, I can't even explain, you just have to be around her. You'll be around a little later. So I'm glad that I had her. <laughs> I'm glad. Since I met you, I've been dreaming about you.
right from me like 12 in town. Yeah. We can fly to the stars, never coming down. Let's go break the laws. We can break the laws. I see you a real one. Standing for your cars. You know I'm a rider. I'm riding for my dog. Thank you. Put your hands right here. Just pretend like it's not there. <laughs> Hi. My name is Isa. Um, Marie Isa. And yeah. Isa, good job. And what's your name? Asan. Asan. And my name is Rake. And I'm six years old. And my name, I'm just showing <laughs> And her name is Israel. Yeah. I love just everything. I love how he makes music, and I love listening to his music, and I love being a part of it, of everything. Yes, that's good. What's your favorite thing about Daddy? Um, I like because he sings. Yeah. <laughs> Raps. Just everything, like when he cooks or when he dances with me and just all types of things, it's just like so much fun. What do you like most about Daddy? Even not outside of music? I like the, his glasses. His glasses? <laughs> he likes your glasses. You like when Daddy dressed up really nice? I sound like when, when you get dressed. Hello, um, hello, hello. I love best about Issa hello, would hello. have to be um, his drive. I love that he's super motivated, like he's never stopping. He's always constantly growing and becoming better. He's my inspiration to be better. Me and my wife have been through a lot, been through a whole lot of things, you know. And she's been with me on the journey. On this, in my music career as well, she's seen everything. She's seen the ups and the downs of it. And somehow we was able to maintain our structure, maintain our relationship. I think the thing I love the most in her, in her is she has this inner peace within herself. She's the type of person, she don't need to drink or indulge in any extracurriculum or she don't need to engage in any worldly things in order for her to feel good. You know what I'm saying? She pretty much wakes up and she feels good for the most part. And that's the most thing I love about her because I can live with someone like that forever because I know how I am. Sometimes I can be emotionally, uh, emotionally unstable depending on the day, depending on what's going on, depending on my mental health for that day. So I got to do a number of things to, to get ready. I got to meditate, exercise, drink my tea, talk to God. I got to do a number of things to make sure I'm ready for the day. But it could be challenging, just balancing, I guess, both lifestyles, me being a father, and me also being an artist. Uh, it's like a conflict of interest because the average father that is at home with his wife and his children, you know, doesn't have to go out at night and be in a whole underworld, you know what I'm saying, a whole nother world, and still come home with all that energy and still have to balance it out. And I think I want them to look at me, a father, a leader, a number of things, an example. So I hope that they look at me in the next 10 years and that's what they see. And that's what I strive to be for them. It's not just for myself, I, it's like, it's for them. You know, it's the reason why I am how I am because I want to be great for them. I want to be great to them and for them. It's a blessing. I absolutely realize I'm just thankful that I, I made the right decision. I made a lot of good decisions in my life. I've made some bad ones, but I've made mostly good ones. And that was one, that was one of the, the great decisions that I made, to be with my wife, for us to have a child, for us to come together as a family and raise a family together. I'm very proud about, happy about that. Sunrise, gotta roll one and get high, we got soul ties. I know shawty down the ride, well come on now. I can't let my time expire, yeah we on now. Don't let them tell you otherwise, I got poor out my feelings, admit it, it's time I reveal it. I've been running and chasing the chicken, got feed the whole village. When it rains, it pours, I drill like a hole in the ceiling. We all been poor, we soon be rich, God willing. 
Jay told me fix my credit, now I'm gon' get, get it. it. The truth is all inside a book, but we never read, read it. it. Don't judge a book by its cover, the cops see me dread it. Plus I'm in that drop top, yeah, the roof be headed. They stereotyping nigga, they think we all ignorant. And I like my women with the brown skin pigment. Yeah, I switched the flow, I had to reinvent it. I had to come to the Lord with a clean heart. It's been a minute, trapping hard, ain't what he intended. Running these streets so long, can't find my freedom in it. I finally came home, now I'm eating good. Home cooked, that's that soul food bullshit. Right now we are on my back porch at my home, at my house where my family resides. We just made it back to the house after letting the kids play a little bit at the park. Sometimes I go in the studio, I have them send me beats. If they're not there, they send it. They all like to work from scratch from the first instrument, like to build from the very first sound. As the as the beat is being built, I'm building the lyrics in my head. I like to do that. I do that. I think that's when my best work comes, when I'm able to get in with the producer and, like, and build from scratch. So then, you know, I think about it. Sometimes I just go in the booth and I just say it, or I just feel it and say it. Sometimes I write my lyrics. It just depends on, on the vibe or the mood of the song or how I'm feeling. You know, if I feel like it's necessary for me to write it down, for me to think about it and actually focus in on a certain topic, then I'll write. Got me in my feelings, girl, you know you hotter than the killers And I'ma take you out, spin with up, and I'ma get you hot in the village yeah. Girl, you know I shoot about you, more guns in here, bullets More hoes than I can handle, but now them bitches know what the is, yeah You know who the car when she faded, she know we gon' buy, we be later. up I want you them hoes overrated, fight and we fuck how we made up Got a shawty right out of Decatur, got a sweet tooth, eat it now and later Got a mean little body when it comes to the music, I just try to be free, especially now that, that I'm growing more musically as well. Like I want to try new things. I'm I'm like open to try new genres, and I'm 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 into bringing instruments and all kind of stuff in. I can't wait to really build my first album. Like I really want to do it the, the real way. I want to have the instrumentation. I'm talking about everything. The band. I want us to all be working together. You know what I'm saying to build this masterpiece. Um, I want to bring people from different walks of life, different genres of music. I feel like I haven't made my, my best music yet. I feel like it's, it's so many different, more levels I'm going to go to before I reach my the pinnacle. It's like so much music I, I haven't discovered. Lately, I've been putting like these country chords inside my music. My brother Omega, he get on the guitar, he put like, like these country chords. I'm thinking of, I don't know if it's been done, a way to blend country and trap rap you know i want to do like a country album basically so i want to dig into some more of the music and actually listen to some more country music so i can build the vibration that it really needs i like what you said it peaks you know that's the best one of the most highest vibrations that you can achieve in their life is to have some sort of inner peace because there's so much going on around it you know, there's chaos outside of us, so we can reach the level we have some type of inner peace. That would be great. 